here. Um, so today we're going to really start talking about uh, edible oils and fats. And I just thought I'd just give you a quick glimpse of uh, a very small snapshot of data. And then each uh, person here is really going to start help build from their point of view uh, various aspects uh, in the space of edible oils and fats. Um, so as, uh, in fact, we were just talking about it uh, just before we came on stage. Edible oils and fats are a very important constituent of our diet. And it's really about having a balanced diet of oil, uh, carbohydrate, and uh, proteins. Um, it is a very beneficial source of uh, micronutrients. So when a lot of people talk about we need to have zero fat, low fat, I just wanted to start by reminding everybody it is all about having a balanced diet. Uh, India is the world's largest uh, consumer and importer of edible oils. Uh, last year, in 2020-23, we imported around 23 million tons of oil. Uh, and many, many, many uh, companies do obviously sell packaged oil uh, from a safety quality point of view, do all the right things. But I think it's equally important to be aware about 27% of oil uh, that is consumed in India is indeed loose and is indeed something that one has to worry about from a consumer safety and quality point of view. Uh, while there are obviously policies and laws that prevent uh, that from happening, but that's really the reality. Uh, so I thought uh, with that context, a very brief context, let's just get into the topic. So I would first like to invite uh, uh, Mr. Ajay Junjunwala, who's really going to start talking about what is uh, really uh, the reality of today, what is the existing trends in terms of numbers, volumes of uh, edible oils and vegetable oils in India. So let's start the conversation there. Uh, you have a presentation? Yeah. Uh, can somebody help him, please? Presentation? Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen. And uh, first, I just want to introduce my association. I am Ajay Junjunwala, President, Solvent Extractors Association of India. So, my shoes for us are. First, I show you the slide. Uh, it is our, about our association. It is established in 1963, and uh, it is a recognized EPA and NGO by Ministry of Health agriculture. Now I will show you some data regarding India's current status. As most of them everybody knows here. So I am just for the sake of time I am go fast a little bit. And the GDP growth, then agriculture sector 3.5% growth is there. And this is a past history that India is uh, reasonably sufficient till 90s, but now it is almost 60% dependency on <coughs> imports. It is after crude oil and gold, it is the third largest commodity India imports. This is a oil seed snapshot. Uh, the area under cultivation is 30 million hectares, but the the main thing here is the average yield is 1100 kgs, which is uh, almost one third of the world average. And uh, the second important thing in this slide is that uh, the value of import is around 20 billion dollars, around 1.5 lakh crores. So it is one of the big draw on Indian foreign exchange. Now this is a oil seed production of various oil seeds. The major nine oil seeds, uh, the total availability in 22-23 is 7.53 million tons. And uh, uh, total if you see tea brown oil seeds and other minor oil seeds, it is 11.35 million tons. Now this is a import percentage. It is roughly, the chart is showing 33%, but it is roughly 40%, 35 to 40%. We are self-dependent and 60% on imports. 
if anybody want we can share this slides with you you can take it later from the organizers and port of vegetable oil this is in uh, uh, this year we are importing close to 16 million tons one of the highest ever 16 to 16.5 million tons in which the major is the palm oil which is around 10 million tons soya 35 uh, 3.5 million tons sunflower 2.5 like that this is a country wise distribution mainly palm from indonesia malaysia thailand soya bean from argentina brazil and this year there is a upsurge in sunflower oil imports because of the cost because sunflower oil cost have gone down below soya which is normally 200 dollars normally above soya and 300 dollars above palm oil but this year it is 100 or 50 dollars below soya it is one of the cheapest oil available internationally since this uh, ukraine war so it has changed the whole dynamics of vegetable oil trade in the world now these are the prices and you see prices have declined in last one year it is one of the lowest in last seven years if you see the may 22 prices it is around 1800 dollars to 2200 dollars now it is around eight to nine hundred dollars and uh, the may one more important thing here is that government has done all taken all the measures rather the import duty you see in October 21 is around 30 percent and on refined it is 41 percent in refined bleach then you rice palm oil, which is now 13 and 5 so the duty is nil the other uh, agriculture says is 5 percent that's why all otherwise duty is nil so it is 5.5 only I want to just emphasize here that government is in all the measures if further if the cost goes up now there is no other measure left with the government now this is the agricultural consumption this is an important slide palm oil has almost 33 percent share in india soya around 23 rape 15 sunflower 8 to 9 percent cotton 5 percent groundnut around 5 percent and other oil around 10 percent outlook for uh, imports this year we are expecting as i told you that 16.5 million tons we are expecting to complete in which this is the ratio and the uh, important thing is the sunflower sunflower has the import of sunflower has increased many times this is a uh, import share of various oils and this is this is uh, the stock position this is also very important slide because this year because of low import duties the imports are very high and we have a stock import of 36 lakh tons 3.6 million tons which is one of the highest and this is one of the very interesting slide that uh, today uh, now we are having almost uh, 24 million tons 24 to 25 million tons annual consumption in india and uh, with the population of 1.4 billion we expect the population growth of 1% and consumption growth I, we have made three columns 2% 3% and 4% say 3% if we take then we need at least 30 million ton of oil by 2930 so we are going to need at least 60 lakh tons more oil 6 million tons more oil in 5 years from where it will come 
from where we get the supply because as we are dependent upon few countries for palm oil in Indonesia, Malaysia, for soya in Brazil or Argentina, for sun oil only one or two countries say Ukraine or Russia. So where this will come? If we will not improve our agriculture yields and the production of oil seeds. So this is a very important question. How we will feed this population where the per capita consumption today we have taken 17.5 kg. But I think it is not evenly distributed. 17.5 is average because somebody is com consuming 25 to 30 and somebody is consuming less than 10, maybe 5 to 7 kgs. So since the income level is rising, so we expect that maybe we'll have more demand which is shown in the chart. Now this is a uh, oil seed production at present 34 million tons as compared to what we are expecting with the normal growth 45 to 48. Domestic production today is edible grade is around 10 million tons which in 29 is 15 we are expecting. So this import which we are talking about 16 million tons will we remain in this quantity or maybe higher. And this is uh, the production chart of palm oil in, produced in India. There are, these are the few states in which the palm oil is uh, being produced, in which Arunachal and Telangana has a maximum share. And government has a very optimistic target, having more than 2 million tons in three years. Let's see what happens. And this is a distribution of palm area because palm is a major high yielding crop. This gives maximum oil. So for Indian perspective, the focus should be on palm, mustard and groundnut, which is having the maximum oil content. This is a problem we have listed that uh, our import bill is 1.5 lakh tons and uh, now this uh, debate about edible or non-edible use is there because a lot of countries are going for biodiesel. Brazil is one of the major producers, EU, Indonesia, Malaysia and they dictate their terms by diverting their edible oil towards non-edible use for biodiesel. So that is a big idea. One one declaration that we are going for B20, B30, create a box in the market and prices go up very high. Now the exporting countries put their regulations, export duty like that. And there is a labor shortage in the world, particularly the Indonesia, Malaysia, particularly Malaysia rather. And there is a war disturbance in Black Sea area as well as now recently in Gaza, which is also escalating the crude oil prices, which reflects price rise in vegetable oil. Now what is the solution? As a commodity we have listed out few solutions. One is this, that we should have a targeted approach rather than only discussing and writing on the paper, we should have a year by year demarcation that what is our target and what we should achieve and which area we have to focus. So that I have listed, that target approach. Then crop diversification, instead of too much emphasis on wheat and rice, we should diversify towards the, the oil seed. Third is MSP. This year, we are not able to give MSP to mustard farmers. In spite of that much import quantity, so we should, what government says, it should defend. We should give at least MSP. MSP is a minimum support price. They should get at least 10, 20 percent more than MSP, the farmer gets. And if you see, as compared to any other commodity, the oil seed prices or you can say wheat or rice prices also have not gone up. If 2, two rupees a kg or 5 rupees a kg goes up, there is a hue and cry. 
but if you go buy fruits 20 rupees a kg for one day on any fruit you will easily buy but somebody says ye gehu mehanga ho gaya chawal mehanga ho gaya then it is a hue and cry so why the farmer should be paid sufficiently so that he would be interested and the second very important thing is that we need laborers we need farmers in a farmer's family his children don't want to do agriculture work they want to go gurugram they want to do go somewhere else to work because nobody is interested in agriculture unless and until it is well paid and uh, this is one more thing we want to, we have suggested the government that we need a champion means in inter ministry there are various ministries who look after the consumer is there food is there agriculture is there food processing is there so we need one champion who should correlate and whatever decision they take it should be followed and followed with the speed and uh, as we have explained for mustard and groundnut that it has a good uh, scope as far as india is concerned being a high yielding crop now intercropping i have already told you and the crop type of diversification and second uh, the last one is that we also advocate for a higher duties so that the prices of oil seed and oils should be kept high in india so that we can reduce the gap between imports and to have self sufficiency and atmanirbharta in vegetable oils that's all thank you future is looking and i think one clear one is how do you make a more atmanirbhar in ensuring we can increase the yield of uh, existing crops and uh, think about what is it that we want to probably proliferate more so thanks a lot I now invite uh, Mr. Suresh Mutwani uh, to say a few words. Uh, please introduce yourself. Uh, as well. If uh, I leave it to if you have a presentation, then from there, please. Thank you. Sustainability partner of the ACA. As I did just speak about the existing status of the edible oil crops in India, I will more discuss on the sustainability agenda. But we are doing together with the ACA only in India. So uh, whatever the edible oil crops we are. using globally the nine major crops are there uh, you can see in this slide palm oil is one of the major oil soybean is the another major oil these two oils soybean and palm oil is contribute more than 70% of the total oil requirement we globally use and trade also between these two commodities globally in india we do not have the much palm oil we do not have the much soybean we are rich in mustard in uh, sunflower somehow but the ground nut so majority of our requirement the edible oil requirement you can see the global scenario where the this is already mentioned by ajay ji how we are increasing the requirement of the edible oil by 2050 we are expecting to be increase existing demand by 50% almost so from where we are going to be getting this oil this is a key questions when we talk about the sustainability we have to be answer this questions how we are going to be meet the expected requirement of the edible oil in our country globally also so in india uh, we do not have any great scenario uh, out of 100 kg what we uh, eat the this edible oil 70% we are depending on the other countries uh, 60 to 70% for sure and majority of this edible oil we are depending on the malaysia indonesia and some part of the thailand for receiving the palm oil what we require so out of the uh, edible oil we are uh, importing from the other countries 70% almost 70% is the palm oil so when we are discussing this all sustainability agenda we have to be value our relations with the neighboring countries also and our the global policies also where we are going to be aligned with the all new dynamics of the requirement of the sustainability it will going to be including the different norms sustainability standards like edua edua requirement from the european union so these are all going to be discussed forever and uh, after 1990 we are heavily depend on these all uh, imported oils only uh, the 33 to 40% of the oil what we produce 
uh, out of our overall requirement. Uh, these are the key sustainability issues. Uh, we have to be address these issues. The technological sustainability aspect, including the lower yield from the farmer's feed. You might be aware the overall productivity of the edible oil crops in our countries is third time less compared to other countries. Where the soybean like crop, we have the average product is one ton per uh, hectare. The other countries have the range of 3.5 ton per hectare. This is similar for the all other crops. We also have limitations in terms of the small holdings, our farmers, the 85% farmers are the smallholder farmers. They are missing the investment capacities, they are missing the appropriate high-tech technologies to be increase the productivity per unit of the land. This another aspect on the soil, de soil degradation, you might be aware the 70% of the edible oil crops we grow in India is a rain fed. 70% out of the, uh, these all crops, the soybean, uh, the mustard, the groundnut, sunflower, palm oil, 70% is the rain fed crops. Farmers do not have irrigation systems to irrigate their crops. So this is one of the major cause for the sustainability. Uh, climate change is a well known phenomenon. This will talk about the every scenario. But these four parameters, the ecological sustainability, social sustainability, and the economical uh, feasibility and the inclusiveness of the smallholder farmers and the old social capital. These four parameters we are discussing. This can be enhance our uh, existing requirement of the edible oil and can do some sort of the self sufficiency for the edible oil sector. I am representing here the Soli Radar. Soli Radar in our organization, we are working on the exclusive sustainability agenda since 50 years now globally. So these are the four intervention points where we are working. We work with the smallholder farmers to train them, capacity them to be increase their better practices in the farm level. Then second, we will work on the uh, robust infrastructure level where we are supporting the smallholder to be farm the farm producer companies and link with the financial institutions, companies, processor, businesses. Third level, we work with the businesses like SCA Association and other uh, many business companies to be support them to prepare their sustainable supply chain while we working with the farmers. And fourth pillar fourth is the appropriate policies where we are working with the stakeholders like you, the government agencies, the business agencies, and the smallholder association, where we are discussing to be designed, defined, and implement some sort of the sustainability standards, platforms, framework, which can be ultimately delivered the expected results in terms of the long-term sustainability not only for the farmers produce, but also the sector sustainability where the requirement would be fulfilled by the existing resources. So when we talk about the sustainability standards, we have the many global sustainability uh, frameworks available, different parts of the countries, we are adopting different sustainability standards, different countries expecting different uh, parameters for the particular sustainability standards. As an organization together with ACA, we are working on this five pillar strategies where we are setting the mod model farms. We are developing model farm for the all edible oil crops now. We are supporting with the higher technology available for the farmers use and to organize them in the farmer producer companies and to design this national sustainability standards. So the all criteria, parameters, the indicators should be co-relate with the national requirements. It's not just about to be sustain the global definition of the sustainability. It's about to be ensure the nutrition security, food security, and the overall benefits of the smallholder farming community in context of national and regional realities. So we are working together with ACA for India Sustainable Wage Oil Mission. We already initiated this program in the five different edible oil commodities, including palm oil, soybean, mustard, groundnut, and the sunflower. These are the indicator pictures where we already developed this sustainability standards for palm oil. IPOS is there. IPOS is the sustainability standards to be support the entire sustainability of the palm oil sector in uh, India. Then we have the IPFLS, Indian Sustainability Framework for the Soybean, which has the different criteria to sustain the soybean sector. We, along with ACA, already initiated the Asian Palm Oil Alliance, where the different countries came together to discuss the overall sustainability of the sector. You must have to be know it's not only about the sustainability of the one edible crop. 
all impact on the palm oil or the all impact on the soybean mustard groundnut or the mustard it's going to be impact the overall sustainability of the consumers overall sustainability of the food security so this is a in link connections where we are working so this is the example of the mustard pot from other farm we are doing together with the ac uh, this uh, sustainable oil program we are doing for the soybean also uh, together with the ac and so far uh, we are also working on the sustainability of the consumer level where the different protein rich crops like soybean can be introduced it is secondary source of the protein in india we have the groundnut product farm i will show uh, in fast with just the indicative picture this ipos is something basically to be discussed here where the godrej the indian company is already the first certified company under the ipos what ever they are grow uh, farm and they are sustainable with the ipos certification standards what we are intend to do we already set up the one central pine uh, wage oil hub in the bhopal you might be aware within india we have the identified 10 districts where the edible oil potential is there mp is one of the prime district along with gujarat <coughs> sorry then karnataka and then at the chatisgarh so this smart agri hub supposed to be integrated the all knowledge available for the wage oil sector and provide to the different initiative technologies to the farmers and the stakeholders whatever the crop going to be required in terms of the particular agriculture practices and also to be connected with the market with the criteria of the traceability and the sustainability another approach is the farmer uh, producer organization we are trying to be develop the uh, producer consortiums for the wage oil farmers so this is our, some of the initiatives what we are already doing so with this limited time i just present what we are doing together with the sca recommendation is more or less same as i already mentioned we want to be suggest government to be the sustainability criteria should be in the regulation system and another approach what we are already discussed in the government of india to do the some sort of the ppp port program to be enhance the uh, wage and farming systems in the long term sustainability with including the fpos and the middle level companies in the line it's not only the government responsibility to do for the productivity enhancement initiative it's also the initiative requirement from the private sector so the so both sectors are come together to design this type of program it will be better a lot and change it matters thank you very much thanks a lot dr kwani i think uh, all the way starting from farmers to what we see in terms of oil seeds and uh, literally adopting states and creating policies so i think a great example of what's possible i'd now i'd now like to invite uh, amnish tripathi from kargil to talk about uh, sort of shifting gears a little bit over here and talking about what might be some new technological advances in the entire field of uh, edible oils and take us uh, into sort of what the future might start to look like Thanks, Shilpa. First customary introduction. My name is Abhishek Tripathi, and I uh, represent Kargil, which is obviously a, a, a very broad spectrum equitable play across both uh, B2B as well as B2C spaces within foods. Uh, I think I'm I, I, I'm I'm so glad that I get to speak after two gentlemen uh, from the complete uh, back end have uh, delivered their. Uh, content because i think it's always better for anybody who is sitting here as a sports person or the consumer to know what's there on the table and 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 how the the back end is all gearing up to power up the front end i think uh, uh, i think i'll i'll speak more with regards to what's really happening in the world of food. Uh, within that world of food obviously is is our world of oils and fats and uh, it is not disconnected it is obviously riding on multiple things that are happening in a broader so let's just quickly uh, step back and see where are we uh, we are in an india which is uh, young and possibly poised to stay fairly young for a long period of time it's a rapidly uh, i would say urbanizing uh, increasingly getting more affluent by the day uh, india uh, it has high aspirations which is a which is a confluence of both the young part as well as the uh, as well as the affluent part coming in together and surprisingly positively it's 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 uh, more connected than ever before right so that's possibly where we are 
even ahead of the curve against many of our developed uh, peers. Well, the good part is uh, this is only poised to get better. And uh, all of this will obviously have a huge impact on how consumers step out, consumers make choices with the products, brands, foods, etc. that they make. So we do know that as, as India becomes more and more affluent, urbanizes, etc., Indians who are famous globally for saving, uh, for being prolific savers uh, and spending a lot of their money on future choices like education and, and stuff like that will increasingly divert greater share of their spends to uh, eating out, entertainment, lifestyle choices, etc. And I think in many ways, uh, both at a necessity space as well as at a, uh, I would say, luxury space, we stand to uh, gain from those tailwinds as we uh, keep moving forward. A uh, couple of big mega trends that I see, Shilpa, and I think uh, these are poised to stay for a reasonable uh, uh, amount of time. One, I think with, with greater education, urbanization, consumer uh, activism, we are seeing uh, the consumer demand more and more transparency in the choice for the products that, that are offered to them. And there are different dimensions in different categories, right? Somebody would, would, talk, would talk about palm would possibly start talking about do you have enough sustainability labeling out there? Somebody would represent chocolate would possibly talk about fair trade and, and, and child labor in, in, into, into it. And, and uh, you know, there are multiple things. But then at the, at the very base level, uh, the uh, back in the day, Indian consumer would possibly be happy just looking at the expiry date of a product. Is possibly looking at more number of things to ascertain and make his choice. In fact, one of the recent surveys by BCG said that 85% shoppers choose for two more uh, uh, look out for two more things apart from the basic MFD uh, batch batch kind of details that is almost now uh, table stakes. And, and I think that has uh, that has uh, implications for us in terms of how we scale our game. That will also create opportunities into how can we leverage it to uh, build uh, our differentiation. Right? I mean, the, the Indian consumer on one side will obviously have palm, which possibly is is coming from Indonesia, so yeah, which can and mustard which can be manufactured from India, and will possibly always have a cocoa and an olive coming from across the borders, where source provenance could be a very big lever of choice. The second uh, piece uh, where I see big amount of, uh, um, I would say, improvement and, and a step up is authenticity. Now, uh, if, 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 on the food side, we often remark with amusement, uh, you know, the namak in the toothpaste and the charcoal on the toothbrush, right? But I think increasingly people are demanding more and more of what's there in their food product. And it could be again at different levels. Right? It could be about how much of multigrain is there in the, in the multigrain atta, right? It could be uh, even about uh, what are the constituents of a blended oil like we were just speaking about and it's not enough to just know but possibly demand more and more about how much and what type. Right? So I think the, uh, we are in many ways seeing a bit of a, uh, a revolution or a movement where the consumer is, is, is uh, authenticity is allowing the consumer to go back to her roots. And that is a big validation of the choices that she makes. Now, I mean, it takes different forms. Sometimes it's about ingredients, and sometimes it's about that sense of nationalism and that regionalism, etc. But it's a big, big validation on, on that front. Uh, the third piece that we see, which is again a mega trend, uh, could be potentially a little more new in India. Uh, I know my friend has, has been a part of that movement in that sense, but this whole sensitivity to health. And it's no longer, uh, you know, left at uh, only heart and heart and avoiding heart attacks, right? Uh, it's also no longer only, uh, you know, pivoted around uh, what should be the reductionist regime out there. I think it's just becoming broader and broader. And many ways, I think COVID has forced an acceleration. So we saw how broader immunity, broader well being. Uh, uh, maybe more, uh, you know, uh, uh, mental development and, and, and more vitality in life, etc., has given up spaces where brands and products can participate <coughs> and contribute, etc. Lastly, uh, uh, I must uh, quote from one of the B uh, BCG studies, which which kind of categorized how the Indian economy and, and the Indian uh, consumer environment is. Uh, there is no one India in that sense. Right? Uh, lots of people who come from outside make that mistake of trying to find their own mirror of which part of India they want to relate, relate with and then they find either surprises or, 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 or uh, delight out there. But uh, uh, what, what, what the Bing study uh, said once was, we have in India 
a part which uh, a segment which has the purchasing power parity or capacity to buy of Europe. And then we have a fairly reason, uh, reasonable urbanizing India which mimics the purchasing power parity of the US. And then we have a very large India which almost uh, reflects sub-Saharan Africa. So I think the good part is that in, in a very large uh, economy, geography like ours, in a very diverse uh, country like ours, and which is now galloping and poised to continue to uh, keep marching ahead, we will have space at all parts of the value spectrum. And that's where I would like to maybe make my final point. The Indian consumer is often mocked at by, seen, by being seen as a price sensitive consumer. I think our friends on the SEA side would also, you know, often make those representations about pricing. But I think uh, I will make a humble uh, suggestion slash correction there. The Indian consumer is possibly smarter than all of us out here. Uh, she is an extremely value-seeking consumer. So there is space for the SUV, there is space for olive oil, there is space for dark chocolate, provided the value is communicated. And then there is space for palm oil, that of the package variety, provided there is enough value for money. That is, uh, uh, you know, put on the table. And I think that's where, interestingly, marketeers, R&D scientists, brand builders have such a big role because the onus of creating the proposition and communicating the value in the proposition pretty much lies wholly and squarely on, on, on us. So, no, that's it. You have to be educated to make those choices. Uh, everybody around the, you know, different parts of India, I would say, are asking the questions are asking and seeking clarifications. Um, and transparency is also about how is the oil process, where is it coming from, what are you doing with it, quality, shelf life, I mean, it's, it's all integrated. So point extremely well made, and I think there's lots to do on differentiation, uh, because there's still a lot to be discovered about the benefits of oils, how different oils are, not just about, as you said, right, they about heart health, but as we were talking, how is it going to help you get to a balanced diet? So absolutely. Uh, with that, I invite uh, Vishal Gupta, who's the Managing Director of Orgies. And he's really going to talk to us more about what does it mean in terms of sustainability. Again, not just from an oil point of view, but packaging and the value system as well. The Spanish multinational. Uh, one of the key categories that we uh, uh, develop globally <coughs> is the olive oils. And hence, you know, uh, my presence here. Um, so, uh, sustainability is a big word. It's the it's it's, it's come to be the buzzword today, and rightly so, I guess. Uh, we need to leave the planet for the for the generations to come. They need to uh, enjoy the the fruits which uh, our ancestors did, and and now we are we are enjoying. Uh, if we do not take care of the planet today, uh, it's going to it's going to uh, bite back at us or our future generations, right? So uh, sustainability in edible oils is very very important from an Indian perspective. Why? Because as uh, Ajay ji and uh, Suresh ji uh, sh uh, shared with data, we are the largest importer of edible oil in the world. We are the largest consumer of edible oil in the world. We are likely to grow our consumption uh, by roughly 35-40% within the next 4, 5, 5, 6, 7 years time. Right? And that's, that's probably an, uh, a realistic estimate. Yeah? If, if uh, all the trends that Abnish was talking about, if they were to come, come through, which, which is likely to happen, you know, uh, Indian consumer is becoming more and more prosperous, uh, there is that much more propensity to spend. They are experiencing global cuisines. A uh, whole lot of food export will will grow from India, which will require edible oil, and hence increase in uh, edible oil consumption back home. Right. So uh, let me put sustainability into two parts. One is sustainability from the point of view of anti environment, environmental sustainability, which all of us talk about. And 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 uh, and I'll delve deeper into this. And then second is the socio-economic uh, uh, sustainability. I think the first part, which is the environmental sustainability, that takes care of the reason why do you need to, you know, uh, get into something newer or better or whatever. It talks about the intent. It talks about policy. It talks about the will. Right. 
so that's that's really the plan uh, and the social economic uh, sustainability would would really mean what gets implemented on the ground because if the stakeholders do, do not see uh, benefit from a social standpoint from an economic standpoint it's highly likely that the all the plans that you put forth they remain on paper right so coming back to our import uh, of edible oils we are the largest importers of palm oil in the world every uh, out of every 7 liters of palm oil that gets produced in the world one is imported into india bro if i'm if i'm if i'm getting my facts right uh similarly soybean oil we saw that 30 33% 34% of our overall edible oil uh, consumption comes from palm oil at this point in time and for a variety of reasons palm oil is under scrutiny globally right uh, because of deforestation issues because of pollution issues resulting from palm fires we we hear palm fires uh, in punjab and uh, delhi you must have seen a lot of days around these days but there are palm fires forest fires happening in the palm producing uh, nations right so a whole lot of uh, uh, challenges are surrounding the palm oil uh, industry there so one of the things i think that we need to move into is uh, ensure that we we buy from certified uh, sustainable palm oil producers so there are uh, there are uh, certified producers for sellers Uh, and and the industry should move that second thing that uh, ajay ji talked about was how do we make india atmanir we increase the uh, the the uh, uh, overall acreage under uh, under oil seeds we improve the productivity i am very surprised to know that our productivity is less than one third of the of the global average uh, even though we we call ourselves the the agri economy the agriculturist you know but 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 the fact of the matter still remains that that we are uh, we are one third less than one third and and that 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 impacts of uh, us big time ajit you also shared uh, some data by 2030 our import of edible oils is likely to be stagnant provided we increase our local production by 50% <laughs> approximately yeah so otherwise if, if that doesn't happen then then you run the risk of an even higher import bill uh, and the need for uh, higher imports of uh, of edible oils because the trends are there to stay right uh, so so that being said i think there are other so apart from the the core categories which drive the overall demand uh, for edible oils in india which would mean palm oil soybean oil to some extent uh followed by sunflower oil to some extent peanut oil uh and uh, and 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 some others i think the industry now needs to uh, look at it a little differently as well uh there are many other things that that the industry can do they might seem very small initiatives given the large size of our imports but i think what is very very critical is the whole ecosystem the the so so uh, newer initiatives getting into newer things is a is a habit and that really helps uh, the overall cause when the cause is as big as what uh, ajay ji highlighted so few things that i would like to emphasize here is one is uh, lesser developed under developed or newer species of oils howsoever small they might seem as an opportunity today So I'll give you a few examples. Olive oil. Today we are into olive oil. Today it's very small in India. But why are we here for the past 13, 14 years? Not for the small opportunity that it represents. We are very, very hopeful, very confident that someday the opportunity will open up. As Abhishek was sharing that BCG data points, that there is a consumer which uh, probably has the uh, same or the more, let's say, uh, disposable income than. Uh, a consumer sitting in Europe, right? Yeah, and aspirations as well. Yeah. So across our today, in a in a in a let's say bakery or a butchery in in Gurgaon, probably would cost as much or maybe more uh, as in Paris or uh, or Barcelona. No? 
Yeah. So, so, so it's not that the Indian consumer is not ready to pay. Yeah. So olive oil is one. Second is I think categories or species where edible oil could be a byproduct. According to me, beautiful example here is rice bran oil. Right. Not a not a core category of oils. Not. It's uh, not grown for the purpose of oil, however, from the rice bran which usually would have been a nightmare for the millers to dispose of probably, you are now able to extract oil, right? And, and it, it supposedly comes with a whole lot of uh, uh, health benefits as well, uh, horizonol, uh, other uh, uh, nutrients, omega-6, stuff like that. So beautiful example. We need more such examples probably. Another such example would be a grapeseed oil. Globally, uh, in parts, in, in pockets, which are high wine producing markets. For example, France, parts of Spain. Grapeseed oil is very big. It, it, is, it is wonderful oil for high heat crime. It, is, it contains naturally occurring vitamin E. Yeah? Here, in, in our, uh, let's say, uh, in, in Nasik, there are wineries that have come up in the last decade or two decades. There might be an opportunity there. Now, my point really here is, if some, somebody could think of taking oil out of a rice bran or a grape seed, which was other, otherwise, which would have been a, a, a waste or a nightmare for the producer to dispose of, there could be potentially newer things that, that could be explored. Today they might sound very, very small, but collectively, the sheer uh, the law of multiplication in a country like, like ours could really help the cause that uh, Ajayji and his, his peers are trying to, trying to achieve. Second, uh, so this was on, on, on categories or species which are less developed, low de lowly developed or not known at this point in time. I think a lot of research needs to go there. Number two is blends. I think uh, uh, blends has a huge, whole lot of future uh, and uh, Shilpaji represents uh, a company which, which pioneers this, this particular uh, trend. Uh, they, they started probably 20 years back or something, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, uh, yeah. So uh, I think blends, uh, blends in India, uh, or edible oil blends in India is a regulated field. There are a lot of ifs and buts there. Uh, last year, the uh, FSSAI uh, relaxed some of the requirements. Uh, welcome change. Uh, however, a lot more needs to be done. Blends is is not is very really scientific and. And who better to tell than uh, Shilpaji here? It's not simply that you mix one with another and, and, and you have a blended edible oil. It's, it's pretty scientific. It, it is done uh, in a proper way because uh, the, the, uh, uh, the, the chemical properties of, uh, of the oils have to come together. Yeah. So Shilpaji will talk about it, right? So I think blends is, 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 is another uh, area that needs to be. Uh, to be strengthened further, uh, both from the point of view of sustainable sourcing uh, for key categories, also from the point of view of balanced diet that Shilpaji talks about, right? And another third point I would like to make here is that uh, I think in our edible oil sector, more innovation needs to be encouraged. When I say innovation, uh, so, so let's say bakery or boulangerie industry, uh, I am not convinced that they are using, primarily they are using palm only because it is cheap. Yeah? They are using palm because it suits the, the, the taste palette, it, it is kind of, it, uh, from an from a application perspective, it, is a, it, is, it kind of suits the, the, the category that they have. Now, there could be the products. One such product, and I, I uh, uh, without getting into too many details, one such product has been developed by our company globally. It is made from high oleic sunflower oil, and it is being used by boulangeries in France, Spain, and it's 
Of course, it is ex more expensive than palm oil, but it's not not prohibitively expensive. But the caveat here is, it comes it it is proprietary, right? So you cannot declare on the fact what exactly has gone into making it. Yeah, uh, how is it? So you need to protect the 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 uh, the uh, inventor, here, right? Uh, and that is the challenge that uh, that that uh, the industry. Which would which needs innovation would face, yeah. So uh, I think that is uh, that is what uh, uh, this three three uh, pointed framework I would say. Uh, one is uh, into uh, species which are not very well developed. Second is the blends. Third is innovation. Is something that the industry needs to encourage. Again, I am repeating. It might sound very very insignificant in terms of volumes. But the power of multiplication is great. I'll, I'll just want to end with a small incident that happened in my household. So the other day I was uh, watching KBC with my family. Okay. Uh, so my son, uh, who is 13 years, my daughter, nine years, my wife, uh, and we were watching KBC. In the break, I asked my son. I said, if if Mr. Bachchan were to give you a choice, pick 10 crores now. Or pick one rupee, which multiplies, uh, which doubles every day, and at the end of 30th day, you, you get to keep the the whatever corpus is there. So today is one, tomorrow two, day after is four. So I said, which one will you pick? <coughs> Instinctively, my son said ten crore. Right? My daughter said ten crore. Yeah. My wife said ten crore. Yeah? I would have also picked ten crore uh, had I not known the answer. The answer really is rupee one, which doubles every day for 30 days because what you get is 53 crore. Yeah. So, so, so that's the power of multiplication in a country as vast as India. Uh, if you get the the momentum going, if you get action behind it, there are there are too many people that will rally and 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 uh, you would find a way. Yeah. With this, I would. Uh, I he has flight to catch, so a uh, big thank you to him. I just wanted to add to uh, what Vishal was talking about uh, with respect to blended or multi-source edible oil. Uh, a lot of science, as you rightly said, goes behind it uh, and is rooted in nutrition because it's all about giving a balance of uh, mono and polyunsaturated fats, uh, which are scientifically linked, clinically linked to improve various biomarkers related to health, uh, heart health of course being one of them, but from a non-communicable disease point of view again lots of markers that are uh, established. A lot of emerging data on uh, how one also needs to balance omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids uh, in, in your oils and therefore uh, I think there's a huge role of uh, blended oils to do otherwise um, it is very much advised never to have a single seed source oil. You are supposed to rotate oils, but trust me, scientifically, if you don't know what to rotate, it is challenging, so nothing like blended oils. And to your point of a multiplier effect, absolutely, because when you start thinking about scientifically blending oils from either, a, like I said, a mofa pufa balance, omega-3, omega-6 uh, oils, I think there's such amazing oils out there uh, which might be small, small in volume today, but I think they have a huge role to play in terms of how we might want to start looking at our oils. Uh, it opens up sources that we might have earlier not considered. Um, so for example, for with Sapola, our, one of our blends has uh, curdy oil in it. And one would think curdy, you know, what is that, who does that, but you know, it, it absolutely speaks to science of uh, uh, the right balance of MUFA and MUFA. So to me, I think it's a great idea. I think there's a job to be done uh, across whether it's the government R&D or in fact even corporate R&D to, to sort of help build the science, the technology in this entire space. Um, I think we have time for maybe one or two questions from the audience. If there's anybody who has a question. Uh, yes, go ahead. Uh, can you please borrow a mic? Mic just be easier. Yeah, please. Hi. Thanks, Shifa. That was blending that was uh, happening more against the grain of the consumer uh, and blending by uh, surreptitious means, I would say. So, I think uh, as the market 
evolves as the consumer becomes more and more discerning and also willing uh, to value that, uh, that uh, choice. I think as an industry, whether we are from the brand side or whether we are from the extractor side or for that matter even the importer side, we should make a concerted pitch to play adequately the value that sits Absolutely. on the branding side. And I think uh, it, it, it could be just time because when you look at the broader spectrum of staples, not necessarily restricting it to oils, staples, which is really even into green and pulses and lots of those things which are, which are at the sufficiency level for a large population straight up, uh, there could be an opportunity to, to widen the whole definition base okay. of the moment you, you put a, a, a valid, nice ingredient in the right prescribed manner, it somehow seems to lose its right to stay with the adding system <laughs> magically rather than adding value to the right? I mean, you add more cocoa, it becomes dark chocolate, right. chocolate, but then you add a nice enzyme that doesn't stay around, right? It, be, it, it becomes something which is, very, which, is, which is seen with suspicion because it then has to go through proprietary things and it is no longer as, as relevant for the different intermediaries in, in, in the system as it could be and therefore never see the right of the day even though the consumer might be willing Beneficial to, willing to, that. Uh, 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 to, to, to try it out. So I think one more point is of course the role that uh, we as advocates of, or the voice of consumer could play in staying ahead of the curve and therefore getting the uh, policy makers see the opportunity. Uh, sometimes we even ahead of time. I think our country has done some of that, right? I mean, Digital, for example, is one of those spaces where we have been completely ahead of time and now the digital world is looking at it. There's an opportunity to do, to, to do that. I think the biggest consumer is the oil, I think. Uh, that we have the right to do it. incumbent <laughs> uh, for us to have to do it on us. And the second piece that I want to invite in our case is that uh, if you were to look at the oils and fats industry, it's a bit like a jungle, right? Where you either would, 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 would uh, wobble between A, the voice of the consumer or the voice of the extractor slash the importer. The, the the middle link is often very, very parochial and, and sometimes would almost be caught in time. How do we get the complete ecosystem to fire? Uh, and that would open up the complete category. Well, yeah. well, yeah. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Anish. Uh, you had a question. Is there any uh, program uh, that is being done to encourage or more oil production? Or like uh, oil printers or such, or what's the current scenario and uh, how is it going to be in the future? Like, as if you put up a model farm, say a small model farm, because okay, our yeah, farmers in India are no, marginal farmers, small so, acre, one acre, two acre, one acre, two acre. So, we have to make model farms. We have to make the ecosystem to make them so that you have to invest so that you have to make them so that you have to make them अपना ही रिटर्न कैलकुलेट करते हैं, अपनी सैलरी कैलकुलेट करते हैं, इसी तरह फार्मर को भी एक जस्टिफाइड इनकम होना चाहिए। आज हिंदुस्तान में जितने फार्मर्स हैं, आई एम सॉरी टू से, अगर वो अपना लेबर कॉस्ट उसमें ऐड कर दें, तो दे आर नेगेटिव, मतलब दे आर गिविंग बैक टू अस, दे आर नॉट अर्निंग वो हटाक और दूसरा हमको अपनी माइंडसेट को थोड़ा सा ठीक करना चाहिए आप जाते हैं एक आइसक्रीम का नया ब्रांड आता है आप 200 रुपए का कौन खाते हैं आप दूध जाते हैं ऑर्गेनिक है आप एक लेकिन अगर कोई आपसे कहे कि साहब ये गेहूं 5 रुपए महंगा हो गया तो हर आदमी गवर्नमेंट क्या कर रही है व्हाट मोदी जी इज डूइंग व्हाट दिस इज डूइंग तो चावल गेहूं इवन इवन आप लेमन भी खरीदने जाते हैं नींबू खरीदने जाते हैं आप कहते हैं कि 10 रुपए का एक है तो वाह क्या बात है उसके बाद आप 50 रुपए की टैक्सी में बैठ के चले आएंगे एक नींबू खरीदने के लिए आप जाएंगे 200 रुपए है और घर से भी कहेंगे चलो साथ में जरा मार्केटिंग टाइल के आते हैं मूड फ्रेश करके आते हैं तो मूड फ्रेश करने के लिए 500 रुपए आप खर्च कर सकते हैं नींबू वाले को दो रुपए नहीं दे सकते अगर उसने मांग लिया तो जाकर दुश्मन हो जाएगा तो आपको अपनी मेंटेलिटी बदलनी चाहिए तो जैसे मैंने आपसे कहा मॉडल फार्म इज ए वे जिसको हम लोग चार पांच साल से प्रैक्टिस कर रहे हैं अपने एसोसिएशन में वी आर वर्किंग ऑन Presently, 2,500 model farms. This we have yearly at least 20 percent productivity. So, this is a small initiative. Besides, we have to import what we have to import, what is the cost, what you are talking about, olive oil, olive oil, that is a niche market. You have to think about 140, 1.4 billion. 
ठीक है आप 10 बीस लाख को तो आप फ्लेवर टेस्ट साइंस समझा सकते हैं दूसरा सबसे बड़ी प्रॉब्लम है हमारे एजुकेशन सिस्टम की आप में से शायद ही किसी को मालूम है कौन सा तेल अच्छा है आप घर से जो खाते आ रहे हैं आपके जो फैमिली मेंबर्स ने सजेस्ट किया वही खा रहे हैं आपने कभी नहीं मानी हाँ प्रोडक्ट में आपने कहा जैसे बेकरी है बेकरी में कौन सा तेल पड़ रहा है आपको नहीं मानू और आप शौक से खाते हैं उसको लेकिन अगर आपसे घर में कोई कहते नहीं आप साहब ये कोकोनट की जगह अभी कॉटन सीड ले लीजिए तो शायद आप खाना ही नहीं खाएंगे कि आपका फ्लेवर गड़बड़ा गया या पेट खराब हो गया पेट खराब हुआ किसी और वजह से लेकिन ब्लेम आ गया तेल के ऊपर तो कहने का मतलब है आपको अपना पहले एजुकेशन सिस्टम जो हमारे यहाँ सेकेंडरी हायर सेकेंडरी है उसमें बताना चाहिए क्या फूड है वॉट इज फूड जैसे शायद ही किसी को मालूम ऑयल है मैं विद योर परमिशन विद योर परमिशन ऑयल को दो ही तरह से समझा जाता है एक उसकी केमिस्ट्री क्या है केमिस्ट्री का मतलब उसमें मोनो मैडम ने कहा मोनो सेचुरेटेड क्या है और पॉली सेचुरेटेड क्या है ये उससे आपका डाइजेशन सिस्टम रिलेटेड है जितना अनसेचुरेट होगा उतनी जल्दी डाइजेस्ट होगा जितना सेचुरेट होगा उतना ही दिक्कत है एक बेसिक केमिस्ट्री लेकिन किसी को नहीं मानता दूसरा उसमें फ्लेवर क्या है सेकेंड इज फ्लेवर हम इंडियन साहब खाने के बहुत शौकीन हमारा शायद सबसे बड़ा शौक ही खाना है ठीक है तो हम खाने के बहुत शौकीन है तो फ्लेवर क्या है तो आपको होली का फ्लेवर अच्छा लगता है किस ऑयल का अच्छा लगता है फिर आप कहाँ हिंदुस्तान में हैं साउथ में तो कोकोनट जरूरी है खाना नॉर्थ में तो मस्टर्ड खाना वेस्ट में तो आप ग्राउंड या कॉटन खाएंगे तो इस तरह से आपके रीजनल प्रेफरेंसेस उसको समझना है तो बेसिकली जैसा मैंने अपने कहा कि एक और बहुत अच्छा पॉइंट यहाँ डिस्कस हुआ कि ब्लेंडेड वाइट तो आपको ये समझना है ब्लेंडेड वाइट्रेशन में क्या फर्क है मोस्ट ऑफ द इंडिया अंडरस्टैंड लेकिन ब्लेंडेड आपने उसकी वैल्यू बढ़ाने के लिए ब्लेंडेड इज अ वर्ड विच इज यूज फॉर वैल्यू एडिशन एंड अडल्ट्रेशन इज अ वर्ड टू मिनिमाइज द कॉस्ट आपने अर्निंग के लिए किया तो इन दोनों का फर्क मोस्ट ऑफ द लोगों को नहीं मालूम तो आप जब ब्लेंडेड कहते हैं तो समझता है सस्ता प्रोडक्ट चिपका है मैं नाम नहीं लूंगा लेकिन आई न्यू यू वेरी गुड ब्रांड जो नहीं चल पाए इसलिए क्योंकि वो ब्लेंडेड अच्छा प्रोडक्ट बना रहे थे लोगों को समझ ही नहीं तो मतलब इवन आप जनरल पीपल छोड़ दीजिए हमारी ऑयल इंडस्ट्री में इवन मेरे एसोसिएशन में भी शायद आधे लोग नहीं जानते कि ऑयल क्या चीज है कौन सा तेल खाना चाहिए वो समझते हैं ये जो है फीमेल्स का काम है ये वो सिलेक्ट करें तो इसलिए मतलब इसके लिए एजुकेशन बहुत जरूरी है एजुकेशन सरकार को भी करनी चाहिए बेसिक लेवल पर प्लस इंडस्ट्री को करनी चाहिए फिर एक्टिविस्ट को करनी चाहिए पहले ये तो मालूम हो यार खाओगे क्या ठीक दूसरा सस्टेनेबिलिटी और इस पर बात हो रही थी उस पर मैं थोड़ा सा ऐड करना चाहूंगा कि जैसे हम अपने पैकेट पर लिखते हैं ये प्राइस है ये कॉन्स्टिट्यूंट्स है ये है आप उसमें सोर्स भी लिखिए आप कहाँ से लाए सस्टेनेबल मीन्स डजेंट मीन कि आपने वो इको सिस्टम डिस्टर्ब किया कि नहीं वो भी बहुत दूर है हम लोगों के लिए बात करने के लिए बहुत अच्छा है लेकिन वैसे बहुत दूर है लेकिन आप ये तो लिखिए कि हाँ साहब मान लीजिए किसी ने अच्छे फार्म से किया है उसका पानी ठीक है उसका सॉइल ठीक है उसने पेस्टिसाइड कम यूज की है तो एक सर्टिफाइड फार्म से आया है मतलब उसका आप ट्रैक कर सकते हैं कि कहाँ से आया है अगर उतना भी धीरे धीरे हम लोग कॉन्शियस हो जाए तो बहुत जरूरी है फूड में ये बहुत ही ज्यादा जरूरी क्योंकि आपकी एक गलती आपका मेडिकल बिल आपकी लाइफ को डिस्टर्ब कर सकती है तो इस पर बहुत ज्यादा जो आज के न्यू कंज्यूमर्स हैं उनको जरूर ध्यान देना चाहिए कि हम क्या खा रहे हैं अगर आप सही खाएंगे मतलब जो अंदर जाएगा वैसे ही आपका बाहर आएगा आपका रिजल्ट आपका आउटपुट आपकी चीजें आपकी सोच अगर फूड आपका इम्प्रूव कर जाए अगर आप फूड पच्चीस इंप्रूव कर ले तो आपकी एफिशियंसी पचास इंप्रूव कर चाहे उसकी टाइमिंग हो चाहे क्वांटिटी हो चाहे क्वालिटी हो तो फूड इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट थैंक यू थैंक यू पॉइंट वेरी वेल मेड वी आर एट 505 सो आई विल ओनली रिक्वेस्ट अ लास्ट क्वेश्चन एंड देन वी कॉल इट एन एंड फॉर टुडे एनी लास्ट क्वेश्चन इट्स बीन अ लॉन्ग डे आई कैन इमेजिन इट्स बीन अ वेरी लॉन्ग डे सो थैंक्स टू एवरीबॉडी ऑन द पैनल इट वाज अ ब्रिलियंट कन्वर्सेशन रियली अबाउट the different kind of advances uh, whether it was just learning about the numbers with respect to what's happening in india what are the projections 
uh, what are the options with respect to either sustainability, technology, innovations, um, and really how each one of us have a role to play in, in advancing the future of oils and fats. So thanks everybody.
right? Uh, for a very long period of time, till recently, while other media uh, um, uh, vehicles were under reasonably uh, a decent degree of, um, or I would say, scrutiny and compliances, digital was not. Right, so which is now there's increasingly increasing codification. So I, I would say influencers per se, irrespective of the medium that they use, if it is, uh, if they are walking into a conversation as an influencer, first of all, open disclosure that we are doing it as an influencer. Number, right. Number two, because the source credibility is also important. Right. I mean, you have to, to qualify the source credibility before you get into the content. Right? Otherwise, it could just be seen as a as a random uh, rank of anybody, and she could be viewed positively as a negative. So I think we will definitely move gradually. Uh, the onus is on us also to play our role to uh, to justify it, because in many ways, um, just as a brand or a product not making its message creates a disadvantage to the consumer, similarly, uh, I would say a lone wolf uh, influencer could potentially also create a misguided uh, set of communication for the consumer and create. So uh, the principle that I would always use is put the consumer in the center and then do whatever is right to him or to her, irrespective of whether it's the brand owner or an influencer or somebody else. But as an association, there should be some kind of Uh, in the media, media world, there was a time when in specific uh, TV programs or for that matter, print vehicles, there used to be a time when where branded content was was integrated. Right? There's nothing wrong in branded con content being integrated, but it wasn't called out as such. I think the new media regulations force anybody who is integrating it to continue doing it, but call it out as a branded industry. So I think uh, 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 absolutely we will have to, but some of this will have to come in. Right. Thank you